the time has finally arrived. After months of planning out the build, frustrating installations, and spending more money than I ever planned, I'm taking the Gladiator out on a shakedown run through some of the most beautiful country in Colorado. Will the Gladiator perform, or is it back to the drawing board, all my money and time wasted? Either way, I'm going to enjoy the ride and get some much needed dirt and distance. Hey, welcome to the channel, More Dirt, More Distance. I've been working on the Gladiator all winter and spring, and now it's time to take it out for a shakedown run. I'm heading up to the Flat Tops area of the National Forest over the long 4th of July weekend. I picked that place because the main road is just a gravel road that anybody can do, but there are several trails that branch off of it that range from difficulty, maybe from a four to a six. So it's a great place to kind of test it out. So I spent the uh, last couple of days getting ready for the trip, going through everything, retightening. I've been trying to track down a couple of creeks and moans and everything I've been hearing through the suspension. Uh, one thing I learned is that you cannot tell where a sound is coming from when you're inside the cabin of the Gladiator, because I would have swore that I was getting a sound through the front passenger side of my suspension. I just checked it and checked it and everything was tight. Everything was how it should be. So I finally just got out of the Jeep and actually started physically rocking it back and forth. But from the outside of the vehicle, I could actually hear that's coming from the rear passenger side suspension. So I went through there and kind of retorked and tightened some few things there and now it's gone. Uh, so I'm feeling really good about how the Gladiator is performing and it should do really well out there on the trail, hopefully. So check out this video with these amazing views. And at the end, uh, we'll see how the Gladiator did and if I had any issues. Discovering a great campsite is one of the best moments when exploring a new trail. Finding this amazing site on the shore of a small pond right off of Heart Lake Reservoir was the highlight of the trip. It is hard to beat the feeling of the morning sun warming you up as you watch the brook trout jump out of the water. As peaceful as the site was, I didn't lose sight of why I was out there. I was out there to explore this beautiful country and put the gladiator to the test. The Flat Tops area is located in the White River National Forest. There are miles of remote trails to explore and so many ponds and lakes that you can have one completely to yourself. It was the 4th of July, one of the busiest weekends of the year, and you can go miles before seeing another soul on the trail. The area is over 10,000 feet in elevation, but the terrain is relatively flat. There are countless creeks and marshlands, so there are also wildflowers as far as the eye can see. The trail so far is mild, only a few ruts and the occasional creek to have some fun with. When I look at views like this, I'm so happy I bought my Gladiator. Being able to access places like this is worth every penny. I wish I had more time to explore all the trails in the area, but unfortunately it can't be done in just a long weekend. I wanted the best possible view of this beautiful country. That meant taking the trail to the top of Blair Mountain from an elevation of 11,457 feet I can get a 360 degree view of the wilderness. There it is off in the distance, Blair Mountain. The trail just isn't great views. There are a few steep rocky climbs and descents and an off camber switchback that'll have you on the edge of your seat. 
It's approximately four hours if you take Forest Road 601.1 from Heart Lake to the top of Blair Mountain. However, taking Forest Road 640.1 is a lot faster, around two hours. But it is rocky and more technical, a great test for the Gladiator. I will suggest taking Forest Road 601.1 to the top of Blair Mountain and come back to Heart Lake on Forest Road 640.1. It is a steep rocky climb to the top of the mountain. The views from the top are breathtaking. It's a reminder of how vast the wilderness really is. That trip was great. I'm extremely happy with how well the Gladiator did. I didn't have any issues at all. I lost the hub cover. I have to see what I have to do to replace that, I don't know. But that's a small thing, performance-wise. No issues at all. Great place to do a shakedown run. And I'm really happy. So I'm ready to get out there for the rest of the summer, hit these trails, check out some beautiful scenery. Make sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss it. I do wanna provide an update on one of the modifications that I did. I previously installed uh, lower control arm skid plates for the front and the rear of the Jeep. And I was having this issue where I would be going down the interstate at high speeds and I would hit the brakes and the Gladiator would wanna pull over to the right. And I was like, man, what is going on here? Cause I thought I had it so dialed in and I just couldn't figure out why I was doing it. So I was researching on Google and everything and it was saying, well, if your car pulls under braking, uh, it could be that there's an uneven pressure being applied to the brakes. So in this case, if it's pulling over to the right, that means the left might, might be stuck or not getting enough force and that's why it's pulling to the right. And I was like, well, uh, I, I barely have over 10,000 miles on the Gladiator. It seems early for the brakes to be having an issue, but okay. So I took it to a brake place and they did an inspection. They're like, no, uh, the brakes are perfectly fine, uh, but there's a few loose, you know, suspension bolts. And I was like, okay, you know, I haven't retorqued everything yet. So I went through and tightened everything up. Still the same issue, going down high speeds, pulling to the right. And I was like, well, man, uh, I guess I'll have to go back to the last modification that I did that could possibly have some effect on that. And that would have been the skid plates on the lower front control arms. So I took off the skid plates, retightened everything, took it out, completely fixed the problem. And I don't know if it was me or the product, and I just don't have time to figure that out yet. So I just took them off. Uh, the, the, I still had the skid plates for the rear lower control arm and for the shock mount, those are fine. And uh, some, at some later time, I'll have to figure out what's going on with the front ones. 